P.K. Subban of the Montreal Canadiens. When it comes to the Norris Trophy, we've had a constant, ongoing debate of what it really means to be the best defenseman. Because at what point is shutdown ability worth more than just putting up points? At what point does the combination of points and shutdown ability outweigh just simply putting up assists? And to be honest, the answer is still very unclear, which is why this debate still rages on. However, just this past season, Tyson Berry would set a record as the only defenseman in NHL history to lead all defensemen in scoring and not receive a single Norris vote. Bruh. Not second place, not third place, not even fifth place. But let's be honest, at this point everyone is like, yeah, you're playing with a god amongst men. Yet, this stat line is not nearly as puzzling as Pauline Bordelot. Because after playing for the Canucks and Quebec Nordiques, Paulin was a stud. And after retiring in the 1980 season, he would take his talents to France to put a nice little cherry on top of his hockey career. In 1990, Bordelot would take up coaching and accept a job as head coach for the then Fredericton Canadians of the AHL. However, on one fateful road trip, his team did not have enough players to play. And this is no joke. After being 18 years removed from his NHL retirement, now at the age of 50, my man would suit up for three HL games, and not only that, he would put up four points. Which is just so absurd and badass, to be honest. As Bordelot would set a record for the most points after retiring for nearly two decades. Sometimes, we here in North America hear rumblings for the next great one. A player from overseas putting up such incredible stat lines, it doesn't even seem real. A player that has the ability to change the game we love. And back in the 80s, no it wasn't Gretzky, that player was Tony Hand. Because after dominating men's competition as a child in Great Britain, Tony Hand, even though he was from an untraditional hockey market, was drawing so many headlines, scouts from all over the world was watching him as a kid, as he was a spectacle. And after some convincing, Tony Hand would be recruited to the CHL, where he would show up and prove his dominance, posting eight points in four games, which was unbelievably impressive, especially when you consider the guy had never played on North American ice, except Tony got homesick and would abruptly leave back home, never returning to North America again. However, and I kid you not, Tony Hand could have been the next Gretzky. In fact, he was considered the chosen one from overseas, as he would set a record and even surpass Gretzky for the most points scored in any professional hockey league in the world, as my man would register well over 4,000 points, including a season where he put up 216 points in 35 games. So absurd, and it is honestly mind-boggling that Tony Hand would never even attempt to make the NHL, where he would have made millions of dollars and would have undoubtedly been a star. But this story might not even be as bizarre as Helmut's Balderus. Did I say that right? Helmut's Balderus. As my man, after dominating the Soviet League for decades, would hilariously declare himself for the draft at the age of 36, making him the oldest player drafted in NHL history. And I guess at 36, he was literally double the age of everyone else drafted that day and also the oldest player to score his first goal at the age of 37. However, just like Tony Hand, my man got homesick. And even though he was living the life, making lots of money in North America, Baldurus would abruptly leave after 26 games in the NHL and go back to a Latvian league and put up 142 points in 22 games. So bizarre. In one of my previous videos, we went over one of the most embarrassing plus minus stat lines as Brett Labda was the only player in NHL history to be on a team that scored 9 goals while ending up with a hilarious minus 4. However, just this past week, we would, well, you know what, I'll just show it. There's one. Over to try side of moving in, he scores! Down low, quick shot, quick goal, Leon Dreisaitl's in it. Dreisaitl shoots, scores! Trick goal, front Gaudreau, shot, goal! Backlund shoots, score! Backlund back to Dubé, but unable to get the pass through. Here's a shot, and a goal! You'd love to see it. 14 goals scored at the Battle of Alberta. However, Leon Drysaddle, during this game, would claim the most embarrassing, if not just puzzling, plus minus stat line to date. As Leon Dreisaitl will become the first player in NHL history to record a hat-trick and assist 
and end up with a minus four. To 99% of the league, a Hattie and assist will be one of the greatest games they ever play. So to end up with a minus four is just hilarious. And don't get me wrong, it has been proven time and time again. The plus minus is only useful in a very specific context. But again, it does tell a story. And as for Brian Leach, one of the greatest puck movers the game has ever seen, would put up one of the most embarrassing stats. Because in 1997, Brian Leach would finish with a plus 31 plus minus. However, the very next season, he would finish with a negative 36. Meaning, my guy had a differential of 67 between those seasons. Just crazy. But somehow, that doesn't even come close to the record Ovechkin would set in 2014. As Ovi would become the only player in NHL history to score 51 goals, win the Maurice Richard Trophy, and end up with a negative 35 plus minus. When it comes to any professional sport, one of the hardest things that most athletes will experience is getting traded. Now, don't get me wrong, we don't have to feel bad for athletes making millions of dollars and living the dream, but for those athletes who have families, it can be extremely stressful. And as for the case of Mike Sillinger, father of Cole Sillinger, Mike would set an NHL record for being the most traded player in history, as he would be traded nine times. I repeat, nine times. And Mike wasn't even, you know, a fourth line grinder, as he had many 20, 25 goal seasons, even in the final stretch of his career. Like imagine having to call your wife every second, if not every year, and be like, honey, it happened again. Yet, Mike Sillinger's 10 different debuts doesn't even come close to the NHL debut of Kellen Lane. Because back in 2014, we would witness one of the last and amazing line brawls. Because after the Calgary Flames would start a full enforcer lineup, John Tortorella would have to make a last second lineup change. And so he too would start his enforcer line. Except that guy right there. That is Kellen Lane. And this was also Kellen Lane's first NHL game. What a way to start, as Kevin Bieksa would actually have the courtesy to swap him out so he didn't have to fight Wes Garth. And right off the puck drop, all hell would break loose. Wes Garth and Bieksa are separated. It's Sestito and McGratton back at the blue line. Torch is angry. Is he ever? He's looking directly at the Calgary. And Kellen Lane would set an NHL record for the shortest debut in history, as he would instantly drop the gloves and not see the ice again, ending up with two seconds of ice time in his debut, which probably should have been one second, but whatever, I guess. What has to be one of the most turbulent and just bizarre goalie careers belongs to who else but Corey Schneider. Because after being drafted in the first round by the Vancouver Canucks, Corey Schneider had a near perfect developmental story as he would dominate the NCAA space, go on to dominate the minors, back up the legend himself, Roberto Luongo, and given the opportunity, he would show that he's also one of the best goaltenders in the NHL. I mean, he had a 9.29 save percentage season, backed up by a 9.37. Extremely impressive. However, the Canucks had a massive issue. Well, actually, let me re-say that. The Canucks made a massive issue, as they would somehow create so much internal drama in the organization, that both Schneider and Luongo at many points thought they were both going to be traded. Yeah, not a great plan, if, if you ask me. And so during the 2013 NHL draft, a bombshell would be dropped. We have a trade to announce. New Jersey trades the ninth selection in the 2013 NHL draft to Vancouver in exchange for goaltender Corey Schneider. As Corey Schneider would be traded one for one with the ninth overall pick which at the time was seen as a horrendous deal for Vancouver. Now, they did draft Bo Horvat, and in hindsight, this trade has definitely worked out, but still, it didn't make much sense. And after going to the Devils, Schneider would have three amazing seasons in a row, even on a very shaky Devils roster. However, after persistent groin injuries, among other things, Schneider one season took a massive nosedive, as he went from an elite starting goaltender to nowhere to be found. And it got so bad that during the 2017-2018 season, Corey Schneider would finish the year on a 12-game losing streak. Bruh. It started in December of 2017 and lasted until April of 2018. Like, are you kidding me? But you know what? It's all right. He will bounce back next season. Except Corey would start the next season and my God, I wish I was joking, on another 12-game losing streak. 
Also, this win occurred against Vegas in just a fluke game where he got thrown into the net in the third period and let in three goals on seven shots, which meant he had a 571 save percentage. So, come on, it doesn't count. So, my man went from a top goalie in the world to losing 24 games in a row. 24. His last win during the stint was in December of 2017. And my guy wouldn't win again until February of 2019. Meaning, he didn't win for 14 months. This dude could not catch a break. 